Salmon are iconic to our region. They have provided food to the first peoples of these lands for millennia. And today, they are essential to the health of our local ecosystems and are a crucial link between ocean and freshwater environments. Because of their importance, Metro Vancouver is constantly working to protect and preserve these remarkable fish. In the Capilano watershed, crews work every spring to catch thousands of young fish. And we have six trap nets located along the shoreline of the lake. And uh, every day we go out and we capture fish in those nets as well by boat. And we send four staff in two boats. It's essential to catch as many of these fish as possible so they don't have to make the dangerous drop over the dam spillway. The Smoltz decision to head out to the sea is based on water temperature and daylight, leading to a short window to catch the fish. Yeah, so we, we average about um, 20 to 30,000 out migrating juvenile coho per year. This year has been a really big year. I think we're on track for potentially a little more than that. And it's unique because we only have six gnats in the lake this year. So I'd say overall the year is going really well. Using a truck that can carry thousands of young fish, the coho and steelhead are transported below the dam and safely released near the ocean. Ambleside Beach is our primary site. We take the fish down there in conjunction with uh, our partners, West Vancouver Streamkeepers, and we'll release the fish either in the day or at night, depending on a number of factors, the number of fish we catch or the tides. These fish will head into the ocean and return to the Capilano hatchery in a few years as adult coho and steelhead salmon. The fish that make it back to spawn will ensure that salmon continue their role as an essential part of the Capilano water supply area. In the Seymour water supply area, a historic moment took place as adult salmon entered the river above the dam for the first time since they were blocked 60 years earlier in 1959. Going back well over 100 years, these would have been very productive uh, rivers for salmonids in this region. The dams had an impact in terms of, of fish passage, and so right now we're doing a restoration and conservation effort to try and reseed that habitat uh, with a healthy and abundant uh, salmon population again. Every year over the past 25 years, approximately 40,000 juvenile fish from the hatchery are released into the Upper Seymour. But this is the first time since the dam was built that wild adult fish have been released above the dam. The best fish is a wild fish, so we're going back to natural fish uh, and allowing them to spawn uh, in the ways that they have done for hundreds of years. These salmon will spawn before Christmas, and the juveniles will hatch from the eggs and remain in this waterway for an entire year before heading downriver into the ocean, where they will spend two or three years before returning to the pristine Seymour where they were born. It's quite a life cycle that they live. Uh, very interesting, uh, the metamorphosis from fresh water into the salt water, but um, we're hoping that um, things will be successful and uh, we'll be transporting them back up again in the years to come. Salmon are an often unseen part of our cities, passing through the few remaining streams and waterways. But these fish are at great risk, given their proximity to urban development. Many of the creeks over the years as the city of Vancouver developed were uh, filled, piped, covered. So, uh, so depending on whose estimates you use, there was maybe 60 to 80 streams in Vancouver and there's a handful now. That handful includes this tiny unnamed creek running from Pacific Spirit Regional Park to English Bay. This creek is incredibly important in Vancouver because it's one of only four known salmon bearing streams. So. Um, we have an opportunity here because it's in a park that we can actually enhance the habitat and protect it for fish. Restoring this creek is part of Metro Vancouver's ecological health action plan. So basically what we're doing is creating um, a series of pools that are really good habitat for coho salmon. So it allows them a place to rest in the winter and feed and, um, and it also allows passage of adult fish in the fall when they come back to spawn. The pools are created by strategically placing rocks in the creek right down to its mouth at English Bay. 
there is a long, steep culvert upstream, and baffles have been added inside the culvert to help salmon swimming up it. This project will improve the stream's habitat, not just for fish, but also for a range of insects, birds, and mammals. And it will help bring back a small but valuable piece of the region's natural history. It isn't just human impacts that can damage our salmon's ability to thrive. In December 2014, in the Lower Seymour Conservation Reserve, a massive rockfall dumped 50,000 cubic meters of rock into the Seymour River, blocking the river and preventing coho and steelhead salmon from migrating. It created a plug in the river uh, which fish cannot get past. We currently are trying to eliminate that plug and re-establish migration back to uh, the levels it was before the slide. There was no easy way to create a path through this much rock. Enough rock to fill 20 Olympic-sized swimming pools. This 3D imagery reveals the extent of the slide's effect on the river and the challenges of clearing it. And you have 200-foot cliffs on either side. Uh, that eliminated the, the, the chance of us getting backhoes or, or excavators and, and heavy equipment down there. So it became evident pretty quick that we needed to use low velocity explosives and break up house size rocks down into microwave size rocks. The plan was that higher river currents would push the rocks downstream creating a passageway for the salmon. The intention with this project is not to eliminate the entire slide. The idea here is to blast a channel, make sure it's stable, and then the fish can swim through it. Downstream from the impassable rock slide, the salmon were stuck in an area that was not conducive to spawning. If the salmon didn't make it above the blockage, none of the fish in the river would reproduce. It took human intervention to save the salmon by literally putting them on their shoulders and carrying them past the blockage. Fish are placed in dry bags uh, filled with water, which are then closed and put into a backpack, and then they've been hiked up the stairs up to the top where they will go into the hatchery truck and then be transported from there. The efforts to reduce the blockage and clear the passageway for spawning salmon was successful in saving the Seymour Salmon Run. Over the past hundred years, our views toward natural systems have changed, and it has become clear that we must listen and learn from the wisdom of the natural world. This approach is exemplified in Metro Vancouver's planning for the upcoming Iona Island Wastewater Treatment Plant upgrade, which forges a path towards a more harmonious and resilient future, where both human and salmon thrive together. We're supporting $250 million towards upgrading the Iona Island Wastewater Treatment Plant. This will keep our communities and our coastal waters healthy for decades to come. The Iona Wastewater Treatment Plant has a direct connection to the Fraser River and the Pacific Ocean. And we need to ensure that these natural resources are protected. We're bringing back salmon habitat, we're bringing back bird habitat, we're hardening the coastal environment that's uh, really under threat now with rising sea level. The Metro Vancouver team's been working hard to develop the concept ideas for both the plant and also the ecological areas around the plant. One of the main ways that the new plant will really support the ecosystem is to improve water quality. The new wastewater treatment plant will embody the region's dedication to responsible and sustainable practices, ensuring the well-being of salmon populations and the delicate ecosystems they call home. Advanced treatment technologies and rigorous monitoring practices will create a safer and healthier habitat for salmon to thrive. The main species that we're concerned with in this particular part of the estuary is the Chinook salmon because the Chinook salmon need that transition time the most. 
Iona plays a really big part in being able to restore those connections that uh, everybody that loves the park, whether they're birders or recreational people or people that love salmon, everybody agrees that this is a really important thing for this particular project. It is impossible to imagine a world without salmon. The health of our salmon tells us how healthy our ecosystems are, and ultimately how healthy we are. Metro Vancouver protects and supports salmon at every opportunity because they are a vital part of our natural environment, our history, and our lives.